Hello and welcome to this TDD tutorial and welcome to the section 2 creating models and data. In previous section we got familiar and comfortable with the ASP.NET Core and MVC concept. We learned what are different parts of MVC, models view and controllers are used. In this section we will implement first part of our MVC application, model. For this purpose we will use Entity Framework, so we will have to learn how to configure it and use it. We will also see some alternatives. To be more precise we will see how we can use PostgreSQL database for building a model. We will see how we can add models and run migrations. And finally we will implement service layer pattern. So let's start from the first video of this section. Configuring Entity Framework. In this video, we will see an overview of Entity Framework. We will also see how to implement model and DB context and how to inject it and configure it. Since we are going to use Entity Framework in the next few videos, let's just have a brief overview of it. This is just a high level run through to get you familiar with the main concept. So, official definition of Entity Framework goes like this. Entity Framework is an Object Relational Mapper, or ORM, that enables .NET developers to work with database using .NET object. It eliminates the need for most of the data access code that developers usually need to write. In essence, it maps code objects to database tables and vice versa. Here is how our application usually looks like from the domain-driven development point of view. We are having three layers. First one is user interface or presentation layer, which is an analog to our views. Second one is business logic layer or domain layer. In an essence, this is our model and controller combination. Finally, we are having data access layer. This is purely done in the model and data access layer basically uses entity framework to communicate with the database in an easy manner. Using entity framework has many benefits. Let's mention just a few of them. It is cross-platform, meaning you will be able to run this code on multiple platforms. Querying is a lot of easier using entity framework. Basically, entity framework allows us to use link queue queries to retrieve data from the underlying database. Transactions are easier too because Entity Framework performs automatic transaction management while querying or saving data. It also provides an option to customize transaction management. Migration. Entity Framework provides a set of migration commands that can be executed on the Nougat Package Manager console or in the command line interface to create or manage underlying database schema. We will see how this works in a few videos. And of course, there are many other benefits using this framework. There are two approaches when it comes to using Entity Framework. First one is called Database First. In this approach, we create database and then use Entity Framework to create domain objects and to build code on top of them. The second one is called code first approach. This is the approach that uh, we will use in our examples later. In a nutshell, we will first write the code, including the main objects, and then Entity Framework will know how to create tables from these objects. For this approach, we need to be aware of two classes that we will heavily rely on. First one is DB context we'll have to have one class that derives this class in our system. This way, Entity Framework will know what needs to be created. Class that inherits this DB context exposes DB set properties for the types that you want to be part of the model. These DB properties will transfer into tables eventually. So, DB context basically defines the database and each DB set represents a special table. We will see how that looks like in a minute. This part of implementation will be done in a few steps. Firstly, we will define model classes. We will do so for audiobooks. 
To be more precise, we will add three classes, audiobook, author, and publisher. Then we will implement class that inherits DB content. And finally, we will configure DB content. Unfortunately, there is not much to be tested here since this is a core infrastructure, so we will not have any tests in this video per se. Okay, let's go to the code. Here I added models folder in which I already added some classes, audiobook, author, and publisher. Publisher is the most simple class. It is uh, having an ID, name, properties. Then we are having an order. It is having ID, first name, last name, age, and this boolean which is defining gives this author also a narrator. And finally, we are having audiobook which is having an ID and author, publisher, title, subtitle, narrator, and the summary. Okay, so let's implement our class that inherits DB content. I will add it in this models folder. Right click, add item. I will just add a new class and I will call it digital library context. Okay, I will clean this up a bit and I will say that this class inherits DB context. I will also have to use this library. If you installed ASP.NET Core 2.0, you are having it automatically installed, so you are just free to use it. Okay, so let's add some constructors. Okay, here there are. I've just added this simple constructor without parameters, and I've added this constructor, which is actually having an options parameter, and we'll see in a bit what it will be used for. Now let's add some properties to this class. And as I mentioned before, this digital library context entity framework should create digital library database. And using defined properties of type DB set, here it should create specific tables. So let's add some DB sets. Okay, here there are. I've added DB set authors. I've also added the DB set publishers and I've added DB set for audiobooks. Now, in this DB context class, there are a lot of events and functions that you can override to be more specific to the model creating and on configuring. Right now, I will override this on model creating method and uh, I will just define something that we will see in a bit. Okay, so I've written this function and basically, what I've done here is said that when the model is created for this entity author creates table author, not authors as I defined here. It's a bit cleaner that way. Awesome. You've just implemented your DB context derived class. This is not the end, however. We need to register our context as a service in our application. Lucky for us, these extension methods already exist. So we can go to the startup and here we will add just a few lines of code. Okay, I've added some things. Basically, I'm reading connection string from the configuration, as you can see here. Uh, you will see that I will add it in a, in a second. And I'm using adding some default value to it and finally i'm adding db context in our container basically call this function and pass digital library context into it and for options i said use sql server and pass this connection string now let's see where i define this connection string basically i went to the app settings json file and I will add this. Here it is. I've added fold connection and I've added this line because this is the name of, our, of my date, my server and the name of my database. So finally, let's add some DB initialization. Here I already added this DB initializer class, which is just calling the context, creating the database 
it is creating some data in the database. For example, we create one author, one audiobook, and one publisher. So what I need to do also is modify a main method, which I already done. So basically in here, I just require this service DB context from here from services and passed it into DB initializer and it should handle everything for us. So if I go to my SQL server, you can see that I don't have any databases. Let's run our code and see what happens. Okay, we will give a few minutes for our application to start. Okay, here is our application. It looks just like before, but now if I go to my databases and refresh this, here it is. Here is our digital library. And if we go to the tables, we can see that it has audiobook table, author, and publisher. We select, for example, something from this audiobook table. We will see that we have one defined column in here, one defined audiobook, and we will see that the same case is with the author and with the publisher. That is because we added this to our DB initializer. Congratulations! You've just implemented your model using Entity Framework.